Um, and it's hard for me to see their point of view sometimes. I'm like, what? Are you serious? But it, it is important to kind of switch the role. So I want you guys to try it again, because um, it is good practice to step in their shoes and kind of see where they're coming from. Um, so we're going to try it again, but you guys are going to switch roles. And maybe make it, a, if you guys are going to be the um, parent role or the, the other person, make it a little difficult on the, the caregiver. Okay. So, so do you want the people that did not do the role play yeah. to do it? Yes. All right. Oh. Sorry, Amber. Oh. 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 Molly and I volunteered the role. So what do you do? Okay. I'm standing here with waiting hands, and it's been a long time, and I'm still standing here with waiting hands. I'm still here with waiting hands. I'm still <laughs> What is he waiting for? The toy. From a friend? Yeah. Oh. So then okay. I want you to turn. No, I want yes. you guys to switch yeah. your roles. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you guys are in the room, yeah, I know. I know. So you realize that you are going to be very sad that we're going to be yeah, I think, and that's really what we can do. But apparently, he talks kind of coined this thinking, which is really great. And it works well. But the idea is, so when you initially ask for a turn with the toy, yes. you're going to show your waiting hand so that they have time to think about whether they're going to give it to you or not. But then we've also taught them that when someone asks you, it's your job to either oh, tell them, morning. yes, you can have a turn, yeah, or it's, it's busy. And so oh, we've okay. gone over the fine art of that, because we know okay. so kids will just not say anything. So, so we've really well, that's what I got. Talk. Kids right. don't say anything. Well, exactly. Exactly. So we've yeah. talked about so how now, it's, okay. once somebody has asked and they've showed their waiting hands, now it's your job okay. to respond with, yes, you can have a turn, I think it's the timer for his baby sister now, that she crawls over and starts playing with his toys. And so he like sticks her down in front of Audrey and like, because I'll be like, yeah, she can't say it, but it's busy with her right now. So now we don't like to have her independent with her, because they still use it in the house. Yep. Yeah. Okay, are you the teacher or the kiddo who's not responding? I mean, something more often than not, because they feel like if they respond, they have to give them away. So letting them know you don't have to give them away. It's still your turn to play with it, and it's okay. You have the right to take a turn with that. But this kid has the right to take a turn as well. At some point, right? And then you decide what you have. It's not like you're just like, that's tough, that's nowhere. I'm just waiting. They're just saying that's what my grandchildren do. I'm waiting. I'm just standing here waiting. I'm just waiting right here, right now. I'm still waiting. See my auntie. I'm still waiting. You said that. I thought he was waiting for you. No, he was waiting for me. What's going on? Are you going to share that toy? No, I don't want to share that toy. We get the timer. Yeah. So now we do the timer. Okay. 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 Hi, here's little Johnny. Okay, so I'm a teacher. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, guys? That's You're fine. Right. I don't want to do it. Do you really not want to do it? I can do it. I can do it. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. That's important. He's pushing. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, I like that suggestion. I do. Okay, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try it. Okay. Sounds good. Okay, I'll try that out. Let's do it. Nice work. That was pretty good. Eating is tough. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure too. And then too, Kylie and I, we were busy with other kids, it's like, he fell asleep, no, oh, don't pick him up, it's so hard, how do you have those kids that don't have you? Know, I don't, I don't see Parents do like that down there, and they're just like, it's hard. Yeah. Um, it's great. What do you guys have now? Non nappers at your house? Uh, everybody yeah. has in my house. Everybody does have Everybody has here. Yeah. But it's a review. Yeah. And you know, my kids have naps. And I'm told that we're using so we can just be consistent with that. Um, and you know, we do the parallel place. And they have a place. I even used to have Tyler. And I'm like, I'm going to have a place. And I'm like, I'm going to have a place. And I'm like, I'm going to have a place. And I'm like, I'm going to have a place. And I'm like, I'm going to have a place. And I'm like, I'm going to have a place. And I'm like, I'm going
Yeah. yeah. You know, exactly. And if, if, if friends are probably right there. Yeah, the parents are always showing up. What we kind of do right now is we all that. That's so awesome. Oh, yeah. I remember that at this time. Okay. 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 Ok
of the mindset. She said, just understand, uh, even research has proved this. All psychologists would be agreeing that any human emotion stems only from these two basic emotions. One is fear, one is love. If they are going to be overprotective, then it's out of fear that it's out of fear that you know they have to make the child get into the right track. If they're not, if they're going to pamper the child a lot or spoil him, it's out of too much of love, and they don't know where to restrict control. Um, so if they're going to, you know, even if the families are going to isolate themselves, it's out of the fear that they're going to be judged. Or if they are going to have a balance within the family, it's out of love and, you know, everything is in shape. So a, any basic emotion stems from these two. It's either fear or love. So if you understand this and you weigh the intention with which it's told rather than how it's told or the words that are used, uh, you would get, you'd be able to judge the problem well. Yeah, and I think that so true. Yeah, it's not uh, like you know, people may be in a bad mood, you don't know what kind of day they've had, or they may not speak in the right tone to you, but then if you have to uh, come to a proper conclusion, uh, find a solution for the problem, you just have to see what's the intention behind it, what's going to, ha uh, what's going to be the positive effect on the child and work with it, rather than you getting affected that they spoke rudely to me or they did not be with me. It's so the focus doesn't shift on you, it's still on the child and you're doing the solution. So true. Very, very true. Thanks for sharing that for me. So again, it's multifunctional. Uh, we can use this in so many aspects of our life. I know um, Brooke and Molly had a kiddo, I don't know if it was the last year the year before, but um, this little guy needed lots of lead time. He needed lots of time to answer a question, to make a choice. He was being very thoughtful though. Um, and the choices he wanted to make. And I believe that dad came from an army background. Was he in the army? Um, and in conferences, Brooke had brought up this, and he kept going on about how slow he was. He's oh, just so yeah. slow. Yeah. He's just so slow. And so Brooke was really trying to tell him, like, he needs his wait time, and he's thoughtful with his job. And this dad was very demanding on his feelings about the whole situation. And, it was unfortunately kind of one of those, okay, well, that's how he feels, and we'll just have to leave it because he was getting kind of aggressive with his tone and the way he felt, and his values and beliefs weren't going to change in that moment. So it can be hard, but if we really kind of use this, it kind of helps navigate lots of things with everybody. So I think it's, it's good to use. <coughs> try it with people in your house. Try it when conflict arises and see how it works. Um, so this is a video we're going to watch, Important Interactions, How to Communicate Effectively with Parents. So it kind of gives us some strategy. It's really short. It's only five minutes long. Um, so we're going to go ahead and watch that really quick. We'll talk about it. instructional video series. I'm your host, Rebecca Tolan. In this video, KIT's program specialist, Neely Matthews, will offer some techniques for effective communication with parents by modeling a conversation at a youth center. Take note of how the words she uses, as well as her body language, makes the parent feel comfortable in the environment. conversation with the parent. Make sure you're setting the meeting up for success. Let the parent know ahead of time that you want to speak with them and confirm that it won't be an inconvenience. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. This is Neely Matthews from the Kit Youth Center. Hi, I was just wondering if you had a few minutes to talk when you came to pick up Adam today? Yes, Adam's fine. I just wanted to get your advice on a few things. The cookie or sandwich method is used when you address a parent about what's going on in the program with their child. You start with something positive, get to the middle, cream, or meat of the issue, and then end with a positive. Hi, Mrs. Johnson. Thanks for coming in today. Sure. Here you go. Have a seat, please. Okay. Mrs. Johnson, thank you for coming in. We're really enjoying having Adam in our program. He's very creative. He's getting along with all the children. We 
we did have um, an incident today during nap time, and I just wanted to discuss that with you. He kicked another child in the face while that child was lying down on his cot. I'm sure the child must have provoked him because Adam would have yeah. done something like that on his own. Well, we did identify that the child that was laying down on the cot did instigate the situation with Adam, and we are addressing that child. However, we also think that there is an issue going on with Adam. Oh, what do you think that is? I think we need to keep Adam engaged with some quiet activities. We recognize that not all children sleep at this age. Well, Adam hasn't slept for quite a while at home, and he is five. Yes, I understand that, you know, all children have different needs, and we want Adam to be successful in our program. We just want to see if you have any suggestions that might keep him quietly engaged while the other children are sleeping. We do have a workbook that he uses at home, and sometimes that keeps him quiet up to an hour. Oh, that would be great. Do you think that you could send it with him tomorrow? Yeah, you know, I could put it in his backpack. Perfect. I really appreciate your input. You know, Adam is doing a great job. We really enjoy having him here. He's made a lot of friends. Well, that's good to know. Also, you should probably know that Adam's been anxious lately. His dad has been going on training exercises overnight, and he's been having trouble sleeping, and then he's anxious the next day. So we've been trying to implement more of a routine at home, and we're hoping that that helps. Well, I really appreciate you telling that. And actually, you know, I have a communication journal that we use here at the center, and all it is is it's a way for us to communicate with you and you back to the staff. So you can write something down, like if Dad goes on a training exercise and Adam doesn't get a whole lot of sleep, or you know, he wants to spend more time with Dad in the morning, just so that the staff know what's going on with him. If they need to give him a little bit more space, then it's a great way for us to communicate. So it stays in the backpack, and it goes back and forth with Adam. That's a really great idea. I like that. So I can just send you information about how he's feeling in the day or so forth, and then each of us will check the backpack every day? Right. And if we have any questions or ideas, we can also write them down here to you, and you could respond to us. That's great. That really makes me feel like you guys are trying to help out as well. Be sure to visit KIT's website for more information at kitonline.org. See, now, now, uh, now you're really appreciating my role playing. Yes. <laughs> If I walked in and they're like, let's discuss Gus, have a seat, I would be like, whoa, what happened? Yeah. Like, did he bring something really bad in his backpack? Like, this seems really serious. So for me, that wouldn't feel right. For me, I would much rather talk to someone upon arrival. I'm like, hey, can I talk to you real quick? You know, and usually then Molly would stay with the kids because we never want to say that stuff in front of the kiddo. Well, even when she called, she had to reassure that... Nothing was wrong with that. Like, yeah. She led with that, like, yeah. being like, oh, we need to talk to you. Like, well, what? You know? Like, yeah. 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 I think that was. I imagine she having a conversation like that, it would have been several small conversations leading up to let's sit down exactly. and to hear this. Right. Yeah. It wouldn't have been like blindsided. Well, and now, I'm going to show you the communication. Right. Yeah. Like, maybe we could have tried that yeah. before. Yeah. <laughs> Like yes. 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 Y
jumping right into it. Mm -hmm. What are Paz's wording are really bad? Of, oh, we're just really glad he's in the program, but nothing like specific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that it's was very the general. problem. Yeah. Like, I didn't think that you need to have a genuine. specific, genuine thing because people can feel fake, and that felt fake. Totally fake. Time. Yeah. So. <laughs> and to, yeah. And, and to the way she said, well, we want him to be successful in the program. So is he not being successful? Yeah. Like, where's that going? So <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. <coughs> so um, we'll get on to several just for a second. So there's a lot of resources that you have as teachers and classroom providers that you can give to parents that's provided on the Seville website. Have any of you ever been on the website? You haven't? Um, so the biggest thing for families that you can tap into is the Preschool Positive Solutions for Families. It's a program that you don't have to be certified to be a trainer to administer. It's a six session program. It highlights some of the basic skills for um, pyramid and how they translate for families at home. So it deals with quality time, those positive language pieces of how to address challenging behaviors, that mindset piece that we worked on last time, kind of really assessing what the child's doing and what they need help with. Um, and another one is the Peewee program. They use play groups and home visits to work with infants and toddlers. So if you have families that you want to guide them towards something, the Positive Solutions class is really geared for families of like three to five year olds. I know the Peewee program is more infant toddlers, but I think that any family could get a lot out of the positive solutions for preschoolers. Um, and if you look on the website, you'll find that they have PowerPoint slides if you want to just, you know, um, offer a night for your families and teach them about a topic. They have a PowerPoint presentation already made. But they do have scripts and videos and handouts. And some of the handouts are really nice, kind of thought-provoking worksheets that you don't necessarily have to have gone through the program to send home to families for something that they could think about how they might want to address at home. <clears throat> um, for that positive solution piece, it's really just helping the parents learn some of those same skills so that they're reinforcing that positive behavior at home. Um, it's the same criteria that they've developed for developing the pyramid that you're learning right now. It's evidence-based. It's really user-friendly, like I said, six sessions. And you can get everything you need off the website. It isn't like this material where you need to have come to the class in order to do it. And then, like I said, that Pee Wee program is really for infants. It's more of a program to help, as a facilitator, help parent that parent-child interaction be positive and more thought-provoking. So it's really almost using the facilitator like a coach. Um, so they're role modeling some skills for parents, but they're really kind of stepping back and as, as an observer and giving some tips um, for how that interaction can be improved or things that the parent can do to plan ahead to make it successful. Um, and you can do it in a playgroup situation or just as an individual home-based piece. Um, but again, you can get all that in both. Is that the, the website right there? Uh, yes, but if you just go to the regular stuff on website, okay. um, you'll, you can you can type in Kiwi or Positive Solutions okay. and it'll pop right up too. I actually printed one of the things on the reference here uh, just because I thought they had a nice handout. Um, you could even, like this one's just a Positive Solutions for Families piece that's just eight tips for parents that they could think of when they're um, working with their kids at home keep your expectations realistic, plan ahead, but it gives them a little blurb about things to just think about, um, which if you were interested in just kind of giving them a teaser about the program or just a summary because you didn't have time to, or an opportunity to find a place that offers the trainings, you could still give them the information. But we do offer them at Bell Swan if you ever want to refer to a family over. <laughs> and so like Brooke was saying, the focus of PD is to kind of be that support for parents. And so it does work nice if you're going to do like a play group and maybe you're going to have like an, an, a Saturday infant play group and really kind of helping parents like matching that child's level. Because sometimes, I mean, I know with ever I have all this experience with colors, but with babies, like I didn't know how to play with them and I could tell sometimes Jared was kind of like, all right, what do I do with this thing? And so you're kind of like, you know, they don't come with a handbook and sometimes parents do need that extra help for the eye contact, that kind of stuff. And so being that support and kind of showing them, here's some things you can do. 
And what's nice about it is they're going to really make sure that you're matching the child's level and that um, everything is age appropriate and also that you're really enjoying it together. That's the other piece that they really focus on, that the infant's having fun and so are you. So I think that's really nice. It really shows in that matching piece. Um, so triadic interaction strategy. So again, that facilitator piece kind of helping them, which is really nice. And I know we do this a lot with the obstacle course. Like, so for instance, if we have a child that's being really hesitant about going through the tunnel, all that really means is basically like saying, like, oh, well, mom, I can see that Liam's really hesitant on going through the tunnel. Maybe why don't you try crawling through and maybe Liam will follow you. Just kind of giving them a little bit of information. The key with that is, is that not giving them too much because you don't want to see like, I'm the expert and I know what's best for your child. Just giving them enough to give them a little guidance to kind of help them. Or saying, mom, why don't you stand over here and put your head down at the end of the tunnel and maybe they'll crawl through. Just giving them that little nudge to help them. Um, obviously, as you know, sometimes therapists will get um, more into that if the child has special needs. Um, I know we saw that a lot with that little guy, but it's great because they were able to come in and kind of help out with us. All right, I want you to try this, I want you to do that. So it really does help them. Um, so this is kind of just showing. So if we're the interventionist, teacher, whatever, and we're the only one doing it with the child, it's really hard when you're teaching the child that same thing for us we have them for two hours and we're not getting anywhere. But if we really get those parents involved, you get a lot more time with those practicing skills. So really making sure those parents are on board is really, really key because if they're not practicing at home, it's going to take so much longer to get from point A to point B. But if they're on our same page, we'll get there quick. They'll have so much practice, so it's important. So this is just the coaching support sequence. So again, you're going to acknowledge their strengths. This is what you're doing well. This is what we're seeing. This is great. Establish a goal. This is what we want to see, and this is what we're going to focus on. And that's going to be what the family's goals are. Um, you're going to have a way to monitor progress, making sure that it's getting done and it's working, taking that data. Um, explicitly teach strategies for incorporating skills into daily routines and activities. So again, something that's doable for them to do all the time. Um, maybe it's just positive language. Maybe how are we going to, what is that going to look like on a day-to-day -day basis, at meal time, bath time, that kind of thing. You're going to model that in front of the parents. You're going to make sure that they're seeing you if it is positive language, that you're doing a ton of it in front of them. Um, maybe role play, providing live coaching, so again, maybe those play groups, that type of thing, and then giving them homework, some practice stuff. Um, one thing great about the positive solutions, there's some really cool homework pieces in there, and hearing the parents come back and saying, wow, I tried this, this was amazing. That parenting class is really incredible. We were doing it with Allison um, for our certification, and I found myself like, oh man, I'm gonna come back next week. I mean, it really is. And just having that networking with families and hearing, like, I'm not the only one that's both really nice. Um, so Making Life Easier series, this is on Taxi, and they're printed to map for you guys. But it's really nice. They're just some tidbits, diapers, like how to make that easier. Kind of gives them some nice strategies on, on how to get the most out of it. How can it be a positive interaction? So they're really, really nice, and they've got some really cool color pictures. Um, holidays, strategies for success running errands. We know that one's a challenge for parents. And so it gives some nice tips and again, um, some ideas, all kinds of great things. So um, if you guys want to come up and take a look at those, you guys can. Um, there's extra backpack series up here. So uh, Brooke color coordinated them so you can see addressing behaviors, what's up here, emotions, routines and schedules, and social skills. Um, so you guys can come up here and take a look at all those. They're all coming out there for you. Um, so some more simple family tools. You guys have these on handout 6.12, but there's a ton of different things. Teaching your child about feelings, making the most of playtime, all those same things I was telling you about responding to your child's fight. <laughs> and I love Brooke's, Brooke and Molly's method. If I have one person doing it, I'm going to get a bit to everybody because that way I'm not singling anybody out. And maybe that's all it needs is one handout and I'll go away. And then if it's consistent, we can get more specific. But that is really a nice way to do it. Give one to everybody, because it's great, so it's really nice. Um, so these are just some different assessment tools. Um, the working <coughs> inventory, Thurman Plus Parent Self-Assessment Tool, you guys have that here in your notes. Um, Family-based practices, all this is on the 6.12, so if you guys want some of those, you guys can. Um, there's just some nice ones even to give parents, so they can kind of look at it themselves, and then they're not having to go back to you, so they can kind of look and see what they're doing. 
Um, so just major messages. Families are an essential component of the child's social emotional development, which is so true. We need their help. Research suggests that family-centered intervention is the most effective tool for supporting partnerships. Acknowledge, ask, and adapt offers helpful strategies for resolving conflict when and if they arise. Coaching is an effective tool for teaching new skills to families. Additional resources are available through the SEPA website. Um, and two, I just want to say, um, when you guys do make those amazing, long-lasting connections, I mean, they're going to last forever. I think it's I think it's so cool. I was at Cindy's Halloween party two years ago, and there was this kid that walked through the door, and I thought, he can't be a parent. He's like a freshman in high school. And he actually went to her home daycare, and he was just wanted to come say hi to her. And I thought, she made that lasting event, and then the mom showed up, and she was saying hi. And I'm like, this fam, they're, they're, they're like family. It's really, really neat. So, um, and that's the other thing to remember is that sometimes we know it's best for those kids and we feel like we want to push that on them, but sometimes we're only visiting their life for a little while, so we just have to make sure that we remember the best, the parents the best. And thank you for bearing with me. Next time I present, no cards are out of course. So. <laughs> I appreciate it. Can, yes. can I share a pyramid yes. success story? Yeah, I'd like to This was actually kind of cool. So last week we talked about our hot buttons, mm -hmm. and you all know what mine was, so let's see. <laughs> So anyway, so I the next day went and told my co-teacher who's doing the pyramid class up in Boulder, and said, oh, we learned about hot, hot buttons and stuff, and I'm like, the same, you know, but we haven't just been engaged, and so we talked a little bit about it. Well, they're a week for six days behind us, so they have Monday night class, but they did what okay. we had last yeah. night. So she had class last night, she comes in today, and I was helping in other classrooms, and then I came in. Um, and she's on the floor with the kids. She's like, Lori, they haven't been at the sink all morning. I've been here, and Kate shows them, and they're playing, and they, awesome. I'm like, see, I told you. <laughs> That's what I learned. It's so awesome. So it's so fun. fun. And I mean, my co-teacher doing yes. the same thing. It's yes. amazing. And we have a third toddler teacher that's just starting. So the two of us were trying yeah. to help her and say, oh, we just learned this in class. And so we're like really excited about our classroom. Yeah, getting there together. Well, and it's so positive too to share those hot yeah. buttons because I Molly said, knows they can. Yeah, one yeah. I did you yeah. <laughs> so if Molly knows I'm getting whacked with the toys. Sometimes she's like, "Whoa, she's in the red. Let me help." Yeah. 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 But if you don't share that with each yeah. other, they're like, "Oh, I don't know what's going yeah. on there." So I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. So if you guys could fill out those evaluations really quick, and then I'll get, I'll give you guys uh, a minute to do your thought seeds. And while you're thinking, I'm actually going to give you one other paper to fill out if you don't mind. But we'd like to make the longer session on Saturday as meaningful for you guys as possible. And one of the things that we're going to try to personalize for you is some of the making tapes that we can work on. Um, and I was wondering if you might share with us what your classroom rules or expectations are. Maybe you have them and you know them. And if you don't, then that's okay too. But if you do know what your classroom expectations are, if you write them down, I'll take them home and put this and I'll work on making um, a more meaningful make and take that it's really personal to you guys. And they can even be like your rules and expectations for home. You know, so if you're wanting to do something for Yeah, kids if at you're home, not having a classroom, okay. it can you know? be your, your house rules. That's actually one of the big things oh, that they no. do in the positive class. solutions for so families. Classes class yeah. talk yeah. about what are your house rules. Yeah, if you have yeah, they got it email it to me or something like that. Yeah, or you can just email it to me. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. So make and take is where we'll actually make things that you can use out So like we'll have a vision. Yeah, oh, that's right. So we're going to make and take like a deal like interpretation. So that's really helpful for us how we post it. So if you think about some rules that you want in your own, you know, practice, then you can put them up and display them for the kids to see. Yeah, that's kind of the But if you have but if you have ones that you don't already have, we, yeah, we're on it. Or the little stop site that we got. It. Yeah, so just right out the bottom. I think, I think we're already going to do them anyways. But yeah, think about some what you roles, expectations that you want for the kids to do, and then yeah, stop signs are on it. We're going to definitely do that too. Well, and think about it. I mean, we talk to Jesse too and see what he's Yeah, definitely. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the cake.
I had some voices before, but I, I really do enjoy hearing the different stories and the conversation and the comfort level between everybody because I feel like I'm just continuing to learn from everybody. Like, oh, excellent. I love to hear that. And, you know, it's just it's such a wealth of knowledge, and I, I love being able to be a part of that. So, thank you. I like your personal stories too, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I like your name. <laughs> <laughs> you the love of Valentine's <laughs> I have a funny story to share with you. That's a movie <laughs> star name. <laughs> Any, it really is. <laughs> Vanessa Valentine. Anything to improve? <laughs> Anything to improve? You can improve anything. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You can share it. There. Maybe reflecting on like like what we what we learned last week. I mean, to you know, because okay. I think we're open to doing it. I think we're doing it, but maybe just prompt yeah. us. Okay, maybe. Because it's especially now we're getting into the fatals. We're getting there. What did you do? You know, what did you try? And yes, you, you, you've done the thing. You know, that sounds great. Like, just reflect on what's working. Anything else? Okay. Well, with that, I will share the funny story. So, I was eight and a half months pregnant.